Hello. Today I would like to bring you a guide on my Earthquake Ignite Elementalist. Since GGG gave us a lot of supports and changes to Melee Ignite, I thought I would take it upon myself to try to see if it's viable, and along with very, very few other people. As you can see, if you search Peewee Ninja and filter by skills that are using both the Ruthless and Volatility support, which are newly changed and or added gems for Melee Ignite, you can see that there is currently three people on all of Peewee Ninja that are using these, and that is this Smite B-Bait, me, and as FF. 
So going off on a little bit of a tangent, I think GGG needs to step up its balancing when it comes to new releases of support gems. Because as you can see, Melee Ignite isn't super meta and or viable. Decent, as I will show, but not viable for the meta. But yet, last patch, they came out with Mana Forged Arrow which is a support that literally gave bow users probably 40% more damage, as Mana Forge allows people to sustain frenzy charges, power charges, gives you basically a free calling strike, and or it automates any curses you apply. And that's coming from one support gem. Whereas this patch, we got many changes to Melee Ignite, but all these changes did not make Melee Ignite quote-unquote viable for the meta. But now I will go through my character, and as I alluded to, it is a fairly successful character, as if you pull up my POB, it has a little bit over 5 million DPS, and that is dot DPS, which is very smooth and consistent damage. Now while this may seem low, I would rather have 5 million Ignite DPS over 10 million or 12 million or even 15 million Bone Shatter DPS, because Bone Shatter DPS requires you to probably have totems down, it probably needs you to have berserk up, it probably needs you to actually be hitting the target, which bone shatter is very melee, whereas my playstyle, you basically hit a big ignite and then you can run around for like five seconds or so dodging stuff. So while 5 million seems low, I would equivalently put it at between 10 to 15 million on actual melee builds. But in addition to this, the character is actually fairly tanky, even though it only has 4k health. As you can see by my max hit, it is in the 50k-ish mark, but this is partially being elevated by my cast on damage taken immortal call. But the reason I'm going to keep it on is because I created lots of investment into making immortal call very good. And all this being said, with my fairly tanky character and a decent amount of damage, I was able to clear all the bosses in the game besides Ubers, including the Feared Invitation. And I only died a single time during the Feared, and that was due to me being in a bad spot versus the build not performing. And all the bosses that I did were witnessed, so they were even harder. And also the invitations were rolled rare. So, if you are looking to do all bosses in the game and all mapping content in the game, this is technically a viable option, as my build only costs roughly 20 divines. So while it is not meta, I would argue it is definitely viable. So going into the gear choices that I made, I am currently running a cane of Colmac. The reason for this is because it was really cheap when I bought it, compared to me trying to roll a rare staff. But a rare staff is also a viable option. Just get a decent amount of fizz damage, so maybe roughly like 500 PDPS, but also with the suffixes, get a fire damage over time roll, or a damage over time roll, and or craft on a 35 fire damage over time on top of some other things. And if I were to push this build into a higher budget, I would craft a rare weapon with these exact modifiers. And if I could craft a 600 plus DPS Fizz staff with double damage over time and fire damage over time, my damage would go up by roughly 30% just from the weapon. But crafting this weapon would probably cost around 40 divine. The other gear pieces that I have are basically giving me all the same stuff, and that is I need to fill out my accuracy, resistances, and some of my gear have physical damage taken as an element since I do not have any evasion or armor on this build. The gloves have some fairly important roles, and that is the implicits of fire exposure, since I'm an elementalist. This adds minus 12 to the boss, but also a 25% on top of this minus 12, along with the four curses that I'm using, which is elemental weakness and flammability. Boss resistances are extremely low, but also the gloves give me ignite proliferation, so I can run another different, better damage support in my 6 link. The other two curses that I run are Temporal Chains. The reason for this is because since we are a dot character, Temporal Chains makes our dots last 25% longer. So whenever I put a very large Ignite with my Ruthless Blows on a target, these last roughly 13 seconds, which allows me to run around and dodge mechanics, and then go back in and easily refresh this Ignite with the Fire Mastery that says there is a 50% chance to refresh your Ignites 
when you crit, which I will talk about more in a sec. The fourth curse that I run is Enfeeble. The reason I run Enfeeble is because, as I said previously, this build does not have any armor and or evasion. So the defensive layers of converting Fizz to Elemental, along with Fortify, along with Temporal Chains, along with Enfeeble, actually makes this character fairly tanky with not that much investment. Getting back to refreshing my Ignites with crits, I do not invest a lot into crit percent except for my amulet, which is giving me a whopping 325% global crit chance. This alone, on top of the power charges that I get, gives my earthquake a roughly 33% crit chance, which I need to, again, refresh ignites, but also consistently apply elemental overload for a 40% more elemental damage. And since Elemental Overload says that our crits don't deal extra crit damage, the downside of Ungul's Harmony isn't a downside, so this amulet is perfect for the build. As for flasks, I am using a Brutal Restraint, which is giving me the Traitor Keystone, so I am only running three flasks, so I can get passive flask charges. But also, I am running the Gain a Flask Charge on Crit, Watcher's Eye, when I have Precision, which is allowing me to 100% keep up my Taste of Hate, Silver Flask, and Quicksilver Flask, which is making me move substantially faster than I would without them, which is allowing me to get in the correct positions to use my fairly slow Earthquake, but also the Taste of Hate is another 14% fizz damage to an element, which is making me more tanky, especially on bosses that hit very hard with fizz hits. The last thing I will talk on is my Weapon Swap, which I talked about previously in my other videos on this build, but more specifically, I am using the Terminus Est Unique Sword, which I use to put down three Blade Storms extremely fast to give me many, many buffs. The first buff from the Terminus Est is when I crit with this weapon, I get Frenzy Charges, but it is also giving me Power Charges as I link it to Power Charge on Crit. The Weapon Swap is also giving me Culling Strike, as it is also linked to my Blade Storm. As I said previously, also when we crit, we have a 10% chance to get Endurance Charges. So basically, my Weapon Swap is giving me all the charges along with the Calling Strike, but most importantly, it is allowing us to hit roughly 10 times a second, which is refreshing our very large Ignites with our slow staff hits. So while some people may think it's a little bit of a pain to weapon swap back and forth from the staff to the sword, the massive upside that the sword gives with the five buffs and or utility that it brings, in my opinion, is well worth the investment. So if you have any comments and questions, put them in the comments and I'll get to them. Thanks.